my goodness, it is my favorite time of the week and I hope that you're all so excited and that's your favorite time too. It's Saturday story time, which what can be better than story time and the weekend, right? Um, I am particularly excited for story time today because we actually get to have the person who wrote the books with us reading the books. How cool is that? I think that is just way cooler than hearing um, some, one of us read the books. So I don't know if you heard from maybe an adult in your household who we have attending today, but his name is Josh Funk, and he is the creator and author of the Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast series. I know, I know. Isn't that one of your most favorite, favorite series? Well, we're going to go back and read the original one today. And then the whole reason that Mr. Funk is visiting us is because there's a new adventure. Yes, we have another one. And this one is wild. And I think you'll relate to it because it involves being very young. So that's a little teaser for it. So I am going to add Mr. Funk to our stream right now. So get your hands together. Clap. He can hear it at home. Hey everybody! Thank you so much, Stephanie. I I am so uh, excited to to be here in the novel neighbor virtually, sort of. Um, the novel neighbor is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite bookstores in the whole entire world, and um, and I'm I'm really excited to be taking part in your story time. Thank you so much for that amazing introduction. Um, I am the author of Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast, and these books were illustrated by Brendan Kearney. And I'm going to read this first one to you right now. This was my very first book. It came out in 2015, so a little more than five years ago. And it's it's um, very exciting because I know that uh, the novel Neighbor has always, always been so enthusiastic about the books. So I'm going to share my screen with you so I can read the book to you that way. And... Here we go. This is Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast by me, Josh Funk, illustrated by Brendan Kearney. Deep in the fridge and behind the green peas, way past the tofu and left of the cheese, up in the corner and back by a roast, sat Lady Pancake beside Sir French Toast. The leftover friends were as close as could be until they heard news from their neighbor, Miss Bree. The syrup is almost completely all gone. A single drop's left, just a drop, she went on. The last drop is mine, Lady Pancake conversed. But French Toast replied, none of I get there first. Like that he was off and the race had begun with Pancake behind, breaking into a run. Through broccoli forest past orange juice fountain, they climbed to the top of Potato Mash Mountain. Pushing and shoving, they fought for the lead. Toast behind Pancake, who rolled at high speed. She screeched to a stop at the edge of the shelf, clutching a grapevine to steady herself. Toast didn't notice and couldn't quite stop, plummeting down into jam with a plop. He scraped himself off and yelled up, you're a meanie, as Pancake rappelled down a rope of linguine. She bragged, I'm the best of all breakfast food treats, then hurled a lime and skipped over two beets. Does anybody like beets out there? Beets are one of my favorite, favorite vegetables. They're really, really delicious and sweet, especially when roasted. Um, I, uh, they turn your hands and face all purple and pink. Everyone should ask for beets for lunch today, okay? Say that Josh Funk said so, beets for lunch. I am, thought Toast, but his chances looked bleak. So Toast took a shortcut down Sauerkraut Peak. Skiing past spinach and artichoke dip, Toast vaulted high in the air with a flip. Nearing the edge, he tried one final jump, but stumbled and fell way below with a thump. Pancake made use of her seafaring skills and sailed across oceans of soup causing spills. But Chili Lagoon slathered Pancake in muck and then had a fork in the road she got stuck. Everyone see the fork with a little smiley face on it? Yeah. Don't go that way, yelled a chickpea to Warner, but Pancake sped on and got trapped in a corner. Caught behind dressings, one rush and one ranch, she squeezed out and started a bean avalanche. Does, that, does anyone know what an avalanche is? An avalanche is kind of like when rocks or snow fall down a mountain, or in this case, beans. Um, as, as anybody like beans, beans are one of the healthiest foods around. The more beans you eat, the longer you will live. Studies have proven this. I, 
I'm talking about regular beans, not jelly beans. Jelly beans do not increase your, your longevity. Um, but beans are also a magical musical fruit. Toast reemerged in the vegetable crisper, sneaking up swiftly, not making a whisper. Beans were now falling from such a great height, some kidney, some lima, some pinto, some white. Searching for safety from raining legumes, Toast turned to hide, but was blasted by fumes of Brussels sprouts left from an old party platter. So quickly he climbed up a celery ladder. Does anyone like Brussels sprouts? No, you're all wrong. Beside him, a lettuce leaf parachute landed. Pancake flipped out. It is mine, she demanded. Battered and soggy, exhausted and crumbling, too tired to push, they were limping and stumbling. There stood the bottle of syrup at last, but wait, it was empty. They stood quite aghast, licking his lips with a sneer that was awful. Out of the shadows crept Baron Von Waffle. I got here first while you boasted and bickered. My, was that syrup delicious, he snickered. With one evil laugh, Waffle slipped out of sight. The syrup was gone, no more reason to fight. Trudging back home beneath layers of grime, Toast said, perhaps we should not fight next time. Agreed, replied Pancake, as friends we should share. Hey, look, we can split up that butter right there. And here they are, sharing the butter, which is happy to be eaten for some reason, I'm not sure why. The end. And this is a, this page is called the gate fold. It's a big, big page that folds out at the end. And I'll show you here. This is what it looks like. <laughs> ah, my book's falling apart. There we go. You can see the entire adventure through the fridge. Now, this, like I said, was my very first book. And I... Um, it came out in, in 2015, and I got what is called a Google alert about the book. I have a thing called Google Alerts where you can you can tell Google to tell you when things show up on the news or on Google or, or people write posts. And I had a Google alert for Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. I figured if that ever came up anywhere or anybody wrote about it, it might be cool to know. And so one time I got this Google alert that said, uh, it was in, I believe, February of 2016. So the book could have been out for about six months. And um, it said that it was a Google alert from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. And it said that Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast was the number eight best-selling book in the St. Louis area. And I was like, what? Picture book, sorry, picture book, not book of all. And, and I thought, that's crazy. It was the, That was never happened in any city, in any town, on any list before being a bestseller. And so I immediately emailed my publisher to see why it was selling so much in St. Louis and how that had happened. And they said, well, there's this one store that has ordered a lot of copies of, of Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast. It's called The Novel Neighbor. And I said, oh my goodness, I need to write a letter to The Novel Neighbor. And I need to say thank you. So I wrote a little note to The Novel Neighbor. And um, the owner and founder of The Novel Neighbor. And I think the store at the time had only been open for about a little less than two years, I wanna say. And um, and and she wrote back and she maybe she emailed me or on, on, on Twitter messaged me or something. And she was like, we are huge fans. We love it so much. And she even mentioned it on um, a podcast interview that it was one of her favorite books, Lady Pancake. And I said, that is amazing. It is so cool. So when I came out with the second book in the series, the case of the stinky stench, I asked the publisher if they would maybe want to send me to some bookstores that had been really supportive. And they said, sure. And as of course, the novel neighbor was the first one on my list that I asked to go to. And I live in Boston, Massachusetts, or outside Boston. And I visited the novel neighbor the week that this book came out. And it was so cool. It was my first time in St. Louis. And it was so fun to visit the store. And we went to a bunch of schools in the area. And, and this book is called The Case of the Stinky Stench. Now, the, the reason I wrote a sequel to this book was because when I saw Brendan Kearney's art for Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast, I thought, wow, that is so cool. I love this art. I want to explore more about the world. Are there any artists out there? Does anybody like to do art? Because I wish I practiced my art more when I was a kid. If I did, Maybe I would be drawing the pictures in my books myself, but I didn't practice my art, but Brendan did. And I'm very lucky that, that Brendan uh, agreed to be the illustrator of these books. And so when I saw his art, I thought I need to explore more about this fridge. And so I wrote a new story and that new story was about a 
Has anybody ever opened the fridge and smelled something kind of funny? Has that ever happened? I thought that that would be a fun problem for the residents of the fridge to have, was that something was stinking up the fridge and Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast would have to try to figure out what was causing the stinky stench. And in this book, they, they help Inspector Croissant try to figure out what is causing the stinky stench. Now, um, this book was originally supposed to be a holiday book. I know it's holiday season right now. And I wrote this as a holiday book because I thought that sometimes sequels aren't as fun as the first book. So I wanted to sort of maybe cheat a little bit and see if I could make it so that everyone would like it because everyone likes holiday books. Nobody doesn't like a holiday book. And I thought if I make it a holiday book, people will have to like it, right? But the publisher said that we love it so much that we want to sell it all the time, not just during the holidays. So could you take out all the holiday stuff? So I did take out all the holiday stuff, almost. The, the actual stinky stench is still a holiday food. I will, I will um, not spoil it for you in case you want to read this, because I know the novel neighbor has copies of all of my books. But um, if you want to read this, it is a holiday food, but I took out the gingerbread village and the potato lockies that were uh, swimming in Applesauce River, and I changed all of that stuff to other things and, and, and switched things around, but I couldn't leave out the, the, the villain of this book um, or the actual stinky stench. Now, you might think that it's, it's Baron Von Waffle, the same villain who got the syrup in this book, but it's not. Um, spoiler alert. It is spoiled food, but it's not Baron Von Waffle. So the first book was a, was a race. The second book was a mystery. And then I wanted to write more. I thought, what else could go wrong in a fridge? And I thought, you know what? What if, have you ever opened the fridge and something was a little bit too cold, a little bit extra cold, colder than, than it should be? Like I once grabbed a hummus that was in the back of the fridge and um, it was frozen like an ice cube and I broke my celery when I tried to dip it in. And so that is what's happening in the fridge in Mission Defrostable. In this book, Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast have to try to help Agent Asparagus, try to figure out what is causing the stinky stench in the fridge. Sorry, the stinky stench. What is causing the fridge to freeze over? Stinky stench was the last book. Um, and and, and uh, Agent Asparagus, she works for the FBI, the Fridge Bureau of Investigation. And um, now, I don't know if you remember, but in this book, Brendan Kearney, he told me, uh, he, he drew Baron Von Waffle peeking out of the freezer on this very last page. And I thought, you know, that gave me the idea that maybe they would need his help to try to figure out what was causing the fridge to freeze over because he clearly knows his way around the freezer if he's been there. And I got that idea from the art from this book. You know, Brendan Kearney, by the way, amazing artist. He told me that he spent an entire week of his life coloring in beans for this bean avalanche page. He spent a whole week of his life coloring in beans. If you keep working on your art, someday it could be your job to color in beans because that is a real job. So keep practicing your art for real. Maybe someday you'll be coloring in beans for a book for me um, or a book that you write yourself more likely. So in Mission to Frostable, they need Baron Von Waffle's help. And you know what? They get it. He helps them uh, reluctantly at first, of course, but uh, he is now their friend. It ends up that he's their friend at the end of the, of, of the third book. Now, as I was going around to bookstores like The Novel Neighbor and schools and libraries with these three books, kids would ask me questions like, how are they not stale yet? How are Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast, how do they not spoil? You said on the very first page of the very first book that they were leftovers. How are they still around? And I had decided that, you know, I thought about it. I decided I needed to address that. And so I wrote a new book in which we solved that problem. So that is the problem now, that maybe they are going stale and we need to figure out how to fix that. And so I wrote Short and Sweet. And um, I'm gonna read it to you right now. So do, do, do. I'm going to share my screen. Are you ready? Share, okay. So this is Short and Sweet, written by me, and again, illustrated by Brendan Kearney. Still in the fridge and behind the Swiss shard in their apartment on Crust Boulevard, prepping a tea party ready to host, stood Lady Pancake beside Sir French Toast. 
Just as they finished the boiling and baking, Pancake said, All of my muscles are aching. Also, said Toast, my complexion is pale. Pancake then screamed, Are we both going stale? Baron Von Waffle, their guest, said, You're gruesome. I've never seen such a hideous twosome. The duo was shocked by their newly made friend. Waffle went on, I don't mean to offend. In fact, it so happens there might be a cure. Check out Professor Viscotti's brochure. Starting to mildew or curdle or crumble, don't sit around and complain, pout and grumble. Try out my patented de-spoiling ray. Feel fresh and young again. Visit today. And I don't know if you know what a uh, biscotti is. Biscotti is sort of like um, a, a crunchy almond cookie that uh, often is its very dry and sometimes it has chocolate along the edges. We always had biscotti at my grandma's apartment. She always had these big like tubs of biscotti that she'd get um, individually wrapped from Costco. Now that I think about it, it probably was not particularly environmentally friendly, but um, yeah, they were pretty tasty cookies. Off to Professor Biscotti's they strode down to her lab out by Artichoke Road. Ooh, artichokes, anyone like artichokes? They are super fun to eat. You kind of like scrape them off with your teeth, scrape the leaves off, very, very cool. Everyone, you having beets for lunch today, ask for artichokes for dinner, okay? Beets for lunch, artichokes for dinner, cool. Greetings, she said as she tightened a gear. Here for de-spoiling, terrific, sit here. And look at this de-spoiling ray. It is half an avocado, slice in half, and Brendan Kearney makes the coolest little things out of food. All he had was the word despoiling ray. He had to figure out what to make it out of. And, you know, clearly there's some like Cheerios on the back and a pearl onion on the front with some cheese. Um, pretty, pretty fun. Nervously, pancake and toast settled in. And, oh, I want one of these chairs, don't you? It's This is the coolest, comfiest looking chair. It's a, a slice of bread that is the back. And... They're sitting on a cushion that's made of Swiss cheese, and the footrest is a pickle. I want a pickle footrest. This is what I asked for for the holidays. Biscotti gave one tiny knob a quick spin. With whooshes and whistles, a spark and a blast, the gadget emitted a laser at last. Where do they go? Waffle asked through the smoke. Right over here, a falsetto voice spoke. And look what happened to them. They turned into tiny little kids. Explain what you did to them, Waffle demanded. Professor Biscotti said, hmm, I'll be candid. I over spoiled them with my device. I'm ever so sorry. I'll charge you half price. Waffle stood fuming. His monocle shook. Charge us, screamed Waffle. They're children. Just look. Eek, shouted Pancake. Oh, Waffle, I'm scared. The monster will eat us. Let's run, Toast declared. Eat you. I'm scary. No, wait, Waffle uttered. I thought we were friends, but, but hey, Waffle stuttered. Shrieking, the duo of pint-sized companions scampered and slid all the way to Bran Canyons. And look, they've got a little teddy bear and a little blankie. Over the great wall of pine nuts they dashed, and down through the fjords of farfalle they splashed. Does, does anybody like farfalle? That's kind of like the bow tie pasta. I like that kind of pasta. And you know what fjords are? Fjords, they're these frozen waterfall things in Scandinavia. I'm probably not describing them terribly well. Maybe I should look up a better description. But I really just wanted to make um, booksellers at story times have to say, fjords of farfalle, fjords of farfalle, fjords of farfalle. Out of the lab came a blubbering moan. Baron von Waffle sat weeping alone. They were my friends, but they ran off and fled. Am I a monster? Because that's what they said. Professor Biscotti approached and began, my gadget, I'll fix it, but we need a plan. And these little cookies, by the way, they're all her little minions, her, her lab minions. There's one that's even in her hair. I think that's funny. Phew, are we safe now? Asked Toasted Pie Peer. Pancake responded, no waffles round here. Then in the distance, they spotted Lime Square. Pancake asked, race ya? And Toast said, I'm there. Down to the city, they skipped and they hopped until Pasta Playground, where both of them stopped. It's like a pretty fun playground. Can't wait till we can all go to playgrounds again. Pancake played fetch with a little pet nugget that scampered away when she offered to hug it. Toast tried the seesaw, the swings, and the slide. That's when he saw something better inside. And I don't know if you can tell what this building is. It is a library. And if you look really, really closely, you can see there are some berry statues that are on the sides of the steps of the library. We were originally going to call it the library. But then we decided not to perpetuate that mistake, so we changed it to library. But the berry statues are still there. Waffle, still sour, knew just what to do. 
This is the bait that'll capture those two. Biscotti kept working in her laboratories while Pancake and Toast sat enraptured by stories. And if you look really, really closely, there are some fun book names that I made up, um, like Amelia Vidalia and The Book with No Pickles, Don't Let the Pecan Drive the Bus, uh, Banana in the City, Harold and the Purple Onion, there's a whole bunch of them. They followed their noses past Fior, oh, sorry, until the two children inhaled something sweet and instantly both of them raced to the street. They followed their noses past fjord, wall, and hill, and then kept on running and running until... The old syrup trick, Waffles said with a smirk. Professor, I've got him, so now will it work? She answered, I hope so, or else this endeavor might cause your two friends to be children forever. And if you look, there's their little tiny baby bottles made of syrup. They're syrup baby bottles. Isn't that so funny? That's what he was making in that vat a couple pages ago. Oh, on the previous page. He was making syrup. So... Syrup is what lured Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast back to the lab. It whooshed and it whistled, except nothing sparked. Something is missing, Biscotti remarked. Waffle responded, you've got to succeed. Okay, said Biscotti, but what does it need? Waffle said, looks like the cags are too slick. Maybe some syrup will get them to stick. And syrup might solve two problems in this book. It'll lure them back and it'll help fix the machine. It whooshed and it whistled, it sparked and it blasted, and when the smoke emptied, they stood flabbergasted. Yes, said Biscotti, success, they've returned. Waffle, however, looked rather concerned. Biscotti continued, cheer up, you look awful. They called me a monster, remember, said Waffle. So you were the Waffle, said Pancake, appalled. But we were the monsters, Sir French Toast recalled. Waffle, forgive us, dear friend, Pancake moaned. We're ever so sorry, Sir French Toast atoned. Waffle stood silently, face filled with grief. And then Waffle let out a sigh of relief. I worried I'd lost my new friends, Waffle wailed. But everything's normal. You're back, he exhaled. Waffle, said Pancake, we'll always be chums. Exactly, said Toast, till we wither to crumbs. In the apartment, they finished their tea. All of their aches and their molds ceased to be. The trio felt splendid in spearmint condition as friendship prevailed through their small expedition. And here they are at the end, having a party like they always do. Juice Springsteen is playing. Brendan Kearney always makes up funny food band names. And uh, in the previous book, it was the Peach Boys. And the one before that was Spuddy Holly and the Croquettes. And like all the books, we have a big fold out page at the end. And that is short and sweet. And, but I did not show you the coolest thing about this book yet. The coolest thing about this book is that your very own bookseller, the owner and founder of The Novel Neighbor has a quote on the back of this book. It says, a fun read aloud for all ages, including the reader. Bon Appetit. Indie Next Selection, Holland Saltzman, The Novel Neighbor, Webster Groves, Missouri. And I thought that that was so cool that they got her to make a quote on the back of the book because it's one of my favorite bookstores and one of my favorite booksellers. So um, if you get a copy of this book from The Novel Neighbor, which they're all available there and The Novel Neighbor is open, you should get Holland to sign it for you because she has a hand in the creation of this book. So make sure to get Holland's autograph when you get this book. Um, she can either sign the back or she can sign the title page. It's totally up to her. Um, also, I wanted to say that I know that it's the holiday season and you're probably doing a lot of gift shopping and searching for gifts and things. And maybe you're even thinking about getting a gift for your teacher or your child's teacher. Uh, let me just tell you that Teachers, I'm married to one, they have enough mugs and candles. So other than wine, the best gift you can give to an educator is a gift certificate or a gift card to an independent bookstore. Now, they can still probably get candles and mugs. I know that the novel neighbor has candles, I'm not sure about mugs, um, but they can still get them there if they really want the candles and mugs. But the gift certificate to an independent bookstore is the best gift that you could give anybody, um, but especially teachers, because they can use them 
for their own personal reading, or they could use them for school stuff because everyone needs books for school. So I highly recommend that you um, just forget about all the other gifts you were gonna get and head to the Novel Neighbor and get gift cards for everyone because that's really gonna make everyone the happiest that they could be. So that's my suggestion. Um, I know a lot of times people ask me if there are going to be more Lady Pancake and Sir French Toast books. And the answer to that is I can't say yes or no at the moment. So, um, but if I were, sorry, something's in my eye. Um, but if I were gonna make more, I love to change up the genre with each book. The first was a race, the second was a mystery, the third one was sort of an action adventure spy thriller mission defrostable. And the fourth one, at first I thought of it as sort of a, um, I thought of it, it was kind of like a sci-fi comedy, like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, or maybe even um, The Absent-Minded Professor or something like that. And then I realized as I read it a lot, that it was kind of more like a magical body swap. Um, it was sort of like uh, Freaky Friday or Big kind of thing. So it's kind of a combo of the two. It's a sci-fi magical body swap comedy. That's that's sort of how, uh, how I think of it. But if I were gonna make another one, maybe it would be a scary story, or maybe it would be a treasure hunt, or an alien invasion, or a heist, or um, a live action sing-along. I don't know how I do that in a picture book, but who knows? Um, in any case, that was, you can count on it changing genres again. So that is, that would be my plan. Only if there are another one. And to make sure the publisher wants to make more, you should definitely buy lots and lots of copies too. So, um, and all from the novel neighbor. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today for this story time. I hope you've had a blast. I hope you have an amazing breakfast, beets for lunch and artichokes for dinner. And uh, have a great day and a great holiday season, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you to The Novel Neighbor for inviting me.